Welcome to Freedom Cast, where your hosts, Jordan and Miranda, show you how to get just a little bit more out of life. Are you ready to leave normal behind? Welcome to Freedom Cast, Freedom Cast listener. Today we are bringing Chad Hitchcock on our show. We are super excited to have him on our show and just talk to him about life, faith, and all of that. So just definitely give this one a listen. You will not be disappointed. It's a great episode. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Chad, thank you so much for coming on our podcast, Freedom Cast. We appreciate you taking some time out of this Wednesday morning to come on and uh, you know, kind of share your life story with us and to answer a few questions. Uh, but thank you for being here. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, and Miranda, for having me on this. This is uh, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, not a problem. Um, if you just want to get started, just to tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and then how you met us. Uh, a lot of people we've had on this show, we've met through CG. For whatever reason, Camp Gladiator just seems to bring people together. Um, but if you just want to take a little bit and talk about yourself, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I love to do that. That's one of my favorite things. No, just kidding. <laughs> favorite uh, thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is working out great. <laughs> no, um, so I originally am from California. I grew up in Bakersfield, California, which is anybody has ever heard of that place. It, it is also known as the Black Hole or the Armpit of California. So I, uh, not the greatest place. I did not know that. But <laughs> Wait, why is it why I is it called the Armpit of California? <laughs> well, it's it's located in the Central Valley and it's surrounded by mountains. So we're we're literally a valley slash a desert, and then within that, uh, it had a lot of agriculture and oil fields, hmm. and so. And then there's just a lot of L.A., Fresno migration and, and a lot of commuting uh, in and out of that town. So it's dirty. And you were like, <laughs> Air quality. <laughs> yes, literally in a pit. But the good news was we were only two hours away from the ocean, two hours away from the mountains. So there was plenty of places to escape to. Uh, it wasn't a bad childhood. It, it definitely made you grow up fast where I was in, uh, in, in my part of town. But um yeah, that's where I that's where I grew up, and then I uh, lived in Ventura, California, for a while, where I met my wife Nikki. Uh, thank goodness she got me out of Bakersfield. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So I got to live, you know, near the ocean there for a few years. Uh, that's where actually my fitness journey kind of began. I, I played college sports. I played football, uh, ran track, did things like that. But um, that's kind of like where I found myself i guess at least the direction that i wanted to go in i, I coached a little bit of uh, high school football back in bakersfield uh but really like fitness uh kept calling me uh you know i guess into that profession like it just kept pulling me in so uh started personal training uh there in ventura uh, i was doing sports training so um oh, and when was that chad that was oh geez that was four, four or five years ago now. Okay. So not not too long, but uh, I did that for like a year or two uh, there. Moved to – actually, that's like six years ago now. Holy man. Okay, so <laughs> um, timelines. So Yeah, now, time – wow, time flies. flies. You're getting old. <laughs> uh, thanks, Miranda. <laughs> Thank you. She always just comes in with those uh, comments. Uh, little zingers. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. No, and then uh, uh, we found out we were pregnant. We knew we didn't want to raise kids, and uh, that's after we got married. Uh I know we were pregnant. We knew we didn't want to raise kids in California just for the cost of living. And kind of, we were living in a 900 square foot house, and the idea of trying to buy a house there was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I can imagine. So we looked around the country. We were trying to figure out, you know, I'm a personal trainer, so I can work anywhere. Um, my wife is a graphic designer, so kind of the same thing, but Charlotte was up and coming and uh, a lot of big business here. So we saw good opportunity. We came out to visit, we loved it. And, uh, the rest is history. I guess we've been here for four years now. I started off personal training. One-on-one uh, -on -one clients had small boot camps before Camp Gladiator found me last year. And that's when I started with uh, Camp Gladiator, also known as CG, um, in January of last year. So this is my one-year anniversary of training uh, with CG, which I have to say with all my personal training experience and coaching and all of that, uh, this has been the most fruitful and uh, probably the most exciting 
thing I've been a part of. One is that's where I got to meet you two. Woo! Um, as well, some of my best campers. I think you guys <laughs> oh, awesome. I don't, I don't know if that's true. That's that's it a is. lot to live up to. <laughs> we we it, have that it, recorded it, now. Oh no, yeah, it's, on there. It's, it's there for life. Um, <laughs> no, very very true. I think you guys bring a lot to camps. You are very personable. People like you. You're motivating. So it's it's a lot of fun to have campers like you both out there. It makes my job a whole lot better. And I get to be me. I get to be real. So that helps. So I hope, hopefully that long-winded thing tells you a little bit about myself. Oh, also, yes, I'm a dad of two. I almost forgot that. Uh, That's important. We would have we circled back there. <laughs> we would have. Yeah, so I just had a baby girl, Capri, Lene, and uh, she's amazing. She's just three weeks old. And then my son, Reveille, is uh, three and a half. And he's the best big brother to her. He loves her so much. It's adorable watching them two interact. And man, what a blessing that is. That that is awesome. Yeah, I can't yeah, They have like the coolest names. If you want to just do a sidetrack a little bit and maybe talk yeah. about how you came up with those, because I I Reveille and Capri, those are awesome. Yeah. Awesome yeah, names. So, I love them. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So what's cool about Reveille is uh so Reveille in itself means to uh, to arise, right? To wake up and strap up. So okay. that's what they used to play before the the army used to go out and and go to battle, right? They they wake them up with the reveille. They do it in all the basic training camps on all the bases now. Um, so that's that was kind of like my motto is always, you know, no matter what, you got to get up and you got to perform. So that was kind of like where I came from with it. But uh, originally, Nikki had this book of names, and in that book. There was a name, uh, and I and I deleted like ninety percent of them for boys. And I was like, no, yeah, nice, <laughs> so, <laughs> no chance. Um, it, it was Reve, which is French for dream, right? So we were like, well, Reve is pretty cool. Yeah. And then I was like, well, what if we call him Reveille because of the meaning behind it? And it's still French, so it still it, it came still works line, came in line. <laughs> and for short, we call him Reve, so it means to awaken and to dream. And then uh, shorten that up to to Rev. So, and I was like, "What a cool football name!" <laughs> so, oh yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So can, hopefully, can, he likes football <laughs> or, or anything. And can you imagine this Rev being thrown out there? Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm saying awesome. be a Rev. And, I mean, either way, be a pastor. That's cool too. Yeah. That, <laughs> a like reverend who plays football. Like, yes. It's all good. You know, it works out. Either. It's like remember the Titans <laughs> all over again. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. So that's how we got his name. And then Capri, actually, that was in Nikki's wheelhouse <laughs> since uh, there's a song Colby Calais made called Capri, which one of her really good friends uh, made a song about it. You got to look it up. It's, it's beautiful. It makes me cry every time I listen to it. Not going to lie. I'm a softy. But um, <laughs> that's yeah. right. We are too. So yeah. you're in good company. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So Capri is where she heard that originally. And then, you know, obviously she loves anything and everything that has to do with Europe. And, and so the, the city of Capri uh, is a beautiful place. And so she's just like, we got a name or Capri. And I was like, okay, that works too. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then the meaning behind her name too is, is just like a gift. Right. So she's, Aww. so it's, it's just, it just is very nice. It's all encompassing. So, um, yeah, so that's how we came up with our kids' names. And we also like to have original names, if you couldn't tell. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those are the meanings behind the names. That's how we came up with it. I'm pleased. I like being original, and I think that it fits them perfectly. So, And, Chad, I will I will um, chime in for you here. I, I thought it was really cool what you shared on Facebook when uh, Capri was born. I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was basically like you were kind of giving a prayer over your daughter. <laughs> Uh, and I don't know if I showed Miranda that, but I thought that was such a cool thing to have on Facebook. You know, Facebook, they can often get, you know, it can veer more toward the negative in a lot of places. But it was just cool to see that. And like, yeah, that's what like that's what Facebook should be for. So I right. just wanted to oh, well, thank give you. you a shout out on that. I thought that was super cool. Thank you. Yes. Um, you kind of talked a little bit about what brought you over here um, to the East Coast. Um so we don't really need to talk about that, but do you miss California at all? Because Miranda and I visited San Francisco a couple of years ago now, and we loved it. So just curious if you miss being over there or if you like the East Coast better. Uh, I miss California 
so bad. It's like one of my ribs. So, but I think it's, it, it's different for me. Like, like Nikki, she loves, she loves it here. She would never want to go back other than to visit <laughs> uh, gotcha. because she grew up in Indiana and things like that. So my tie to California is a little bit different and that and my family lives there. Like oh, my whole entire family lives in California. Um, uh, so gotcha. okay. there's that, but, um, there's just something about that state, you know, you can go as far as San Francisco and it's a completely different scene and atmosphere than if you went down to San Diego or LA or Sacramento, or you're going to Tahoe. I mean, there's just so much just variation in, in the lifestyles that people have and, and just the culture changes as you go through the state and then you go down the whole coastline, which is totally my vibe. Uh, is just completely chill. Like in the central coast is very different than the northern coast or even San Diego on that coast. Mm. Uh, you know, the, you just see the differences in, in Malibu and, and Santa Barbara, all of these places. And it's just like, it's almost like God was like, yep, we're going to make all of this completely beautiful. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Let's paint this picture, right? So, uh, yeah. yeah. So when you go there and like for me, like just the ocean and, and I'll explain why, like, like listening to waves crashing and things like that is like my peace. Like that's where, yeah, that's where I live if I need to just calm down. In fact, I go to sleep at night to the sound of ocean waves crashing. So like I can't sleep unless I have that. That's why at least I moved to Huntersville because I'm close enough to water that I'm okay, <laughs> that I'm surviving. There's a lake, there's a lake close there. by. <laughs> it's not the same, but it's close. You know, you can go there and there's lapping. There's a little lapping of water. Um, but yeah, I do miss California. But at the same time, I think that the move here was was all God, to be honest. And it's it's been an amazing journey. Um, <clears throat> my family, when they come to visit, they love it here too. And they see why we moved. Um, it's amazing. I've met the most amazing people here. I would say that a lot of the people that I've met here and made friends with here are, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So um, I do. I, I, I love both. I miss California, but I, I'm not going to move back. Like I love North Carolina. Yeah. I feel like that, that is something that's real cool, you know, to, you know, to the Southern living. I feel like Miranda and I have noticed that not that we didn't know some really good people in Pennsylvania right. and really good people where I grew up in Maine, but just the overall like friendly vibe. It's just, you just get that in North Carolina, I think. And especially it seems like around Charlotte in this area. So. Yeah. And it's crazy because sure, Charlotte's really a melting pot, you know, like, like you guys, you're not from here. I'm not from here. Nikki's not from here, but you get here and it's like, you just kind of, you get that sense of family, I guess it's, it's like a, an extended family, but it's, it's kind of cool. It, it definitely is a peaceful feeling. I like it. This is this is kind of off track here, but I just wanted to. We ask. like it. Off yeah. track is great. Track is <laughs> so amazing. I was just wanted to know if the stereotype is true because we just read an article because there's been this like cold snap over you know all the U.S. Mm -hmm. and on it it was talking about how some brave Californians put on their jackets and went out on the beach when it was like 50 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally I just thought that was really true. funny. <laughs> that is not false. That is true. Like if you're there, my sister, for example, she's just told me that she broke out her, her scarves and sweater and it's 73 degrees in San Diego. <laughs> and she's, and I, was I, like, I was like, what are you wearing? You should be in like tank tops and shorts. Like, what are you doing? Um, yeah so yeah it's totally true because you just get used to the weather change like where she lives and where i used to live i think it on average it was 68 70 degrees almost year round like you would hit a little bit of cold spots but yeah you get so spoiled that anything below 60 you're like oh my gosh i need to sweatshirt. where's my jacket yeah so, yeah. yeah that's crazy yeah. <laughs> i remember because people were people were told us before we went to san francisco they were like it's gonna be cold there and i was looking at the weather like like 60s whatever is not really that cold and it was actually i mean it was pretty i guess it's pretty consistent in san francisco mm -hmm. too but it wasn't cold yeah <laughs> no, it, we were fine I think, I think it gets chillier there but it's a wet cold you know it's like that thing that you, gotcha. you just can't get dry so because the air is so so moist uh just from the ocean yeah. ocean mist and breeze and it's just a damp kind of place there in san francisco because I get cold up there, but it's it's definitely not like today where I wore like five shirts and a jacket plus a sweatshirt to try and stay warm. Uh, <laughs> you're definitely not doing that. Maybe a t-shirt and then a jacket and you're good. But um, yeah, it's it's a different it's a different mindset. But then, you know, people from Minnesota are like probably making fun of us like nine degrees. Try negative seventeen. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah. 
Yeah, that's what it's going to be. We looked up the weather in Maine for this upcoming Friday. That would be January 5th. Uh, as of this recording, it's supposed to be negative 17 in Maine. I think that was the high. Yeah. Oh, so, my goodness. I believe Yeah, so yeah. even even colder. But that's terrible. It is <laughs> just awful. <laughs> I posted on Facebook last night that, that, or the other night, and I just put up some temperatures and was like, this is why I'm never moving yeah, back to Maine that. or Pennsylvania. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I'd never oh, it's crazy. live in Minnesota again. I went to college there, and that was enough. I, oh, cool. Yeah. I'd visit. But that's about it. Yeah, I don't know if I'd, I don't think I would ever, I don't know. I don't think I could ever move any further north from where I am. Yeah. I could see us moving further south or California, maybe. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You guys just make it, make it big, be rock stars, go out there to California, enjoy the rest of your life. There hey, you that's go. what we're planning yeah. on doing. <laughs> we, we would come back and well, visit. that's good. We would miss you. <laughs> we would be snowbirds for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chad, if we want to jump into the next question, uh, if you just want to talk about maybe some hurdles that you faced in your life and, uh, you know, what you went through and how you overcame them, uh, you can kind of talk about uh, anything, whether it was like, you know, deciding to move or any, just jump into, uh, you know, jump into anything here. Man, it's, it, that's, that's a tough one. There's so many things. I know a lot of us go through a lot of different changes throughout our lives and there's plenty of hurdles that we have to jump through. I guess the most for sure. The most significant ones for me, one was one was yes moving out here, but before that, I would say um a big hurdle for me was I guess self-love and uh accepting that I'm not perfect. And, and and I'll I'll, I'll get yeah. into this a little bit more uh, because I grew up as the oldest boy in my house, right? My dad wasn't really around, and so I always viewed myself as the protector, you know, someone that's got to get it done. And if I'm in sports, I was always the quarterback or the captain on a team because I just I think I just take over that role naturally. And gotcha. And I think a part of it, growing growing up and, and then getting into adulthood. Uh, I, I was actually, uh, after my college playing days were over, I got a job with the prison system in California. So I was in a state, state prison. Uh, I was a, I was a guard. <clears throat> and of course my first job was at a maximum security yard, which we, which of we course called, that sounds which frightening. We called <laughs> Disneyland because they got to 400 inmates all or, or more at once with like eight of us officers on the yard with 400. Wow. Yeah, and they got their wow. your yard. They got to play around with stuff and and go to class and do whatever they wanted. Uh, but <clears throat> at that time, uh, we knew something bad was going to happen. I mean, it was kind of in the air. Um, they went out that day. Ended up being a really bad stabbing, which I happened to be a part of. Hmm. <laughs> but the, the craziest part was this was the end of my first month on the job. So I was like, well, well welcome wow. to the prison system. Um, but I was a first responder, right? Of course. And so yep. I was supposed to be one of the first people to get to an, a scene and kind of uh, take care of business as it was. Uh, so I did. <laughs> I jumped in, uh, you know, pulled it, my sergeant out there that had been stabbed multiple times um, and then had to go back in for more. So it was one of those instances where you, you f afterwards, and, and, and this is probably like years uh, you know, building up, you know, and, and having nightmares and things of that, of that day and, and not feeling like I did enough because when yeah, you're sure. in a situation where you're that person, where you just hold so much weight on your shoulders, you just think oh, I could have done more, you know, maybe if I'd gotten there faster. Um, so the hurdle that I had to overcome was, was the PTSD part of that and the depression and the anxiety built around that piece is that I wasn't good enough or I, I wasn't fast enough or I hadn't done enough and I, I wasn't able to forgive myself. Therefore, there was a downward spiral, you know, basically not becoming the person that I was. And so a, a hurdle that I had to overcome was finding myself again and, and, and being, you know, able to accept that I did do enough and that I did, uh, you know, I did something great and, I, and, and it's okay to feel that, that, I, that I did something like that. And the outcome was that nobody died, you know, and that, and that was good that people got to go home that day. Um, yeah, absolutely. That really that, you know, everyone around you rallied. It was, it was, uh, there's just really nothing more that you could do as an individual. So I just, I, I it took me some time to, to just deal with that and, 
and be able to talk about it. Like I, I probably wouldn't have been able to even talk about that story. If like, I don't know, even a year ago <clears throat> without breaking down or something. But, uh, so that, yeah, I can imagine I would have a, I would have a tough time yeah. with that for sure. Well, and then what's really cool is through, through that too. And through the downfall, you know, you know, I fell away from God. It was, it was just a big battle. Right. Um, found Nikki and all of this <laughs> Madison, she had just lost a spouse, not but two years before that. So she also had her stuff that she was dealing with, but together we kind of were like, okay, well let's, let's <laughs> tag team this thing. And she brought me back to God, believe it or not. And uh, we started going to church. We started praying together and doing things. I, w- I would go to therapy, really talking about things, which is, was for me an ego check because I didn't like to do that. But again, that is that was part of the journey, part of getting over the hurdle so that I can move forward with my life and, and really pursue things that, that meant the most to me, which was helping people. Finding that that gym again where, you know, that's who I am. That's that's what was placed on in my heart and and said, Chad, this you you are a person who's gonna help people. So and in what capacity? I didn't know yet, right? So uh, that brought me to moving to the coast i left that job um for obvious reasons um but then got with a really good church started i I met a guy named tim lunsford who who had impact sports training um started training with them you know you know impacting lives was like the big thing and and he was a good christian guy um the the company was actually built around christianity and and just kind of influence these young athletes lives to then influence other people and i love that i was like not only does yeah, not only great. do you help these kids but then they go and you're mentoring them to then help other kids so you've got older kids helping the younger kids and then we had nfl guys coming in and training with us and it was just it was a really really cool experience really eye-opening and at that moment i think i really started to, to have some self-acceptance um and then honestly, fast forwarding, because it's still years, I still hadn't really overcome this hurdle. It was a big one. Yeah. Uh, came to North Carolina, and that's where the epiphany happened. You know, that's where God turned on my light switch, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> and I was like, gosh, I just, you know what? I really love training. I really love helping people. Like, that is my heart. That is where I need to be. I'm impacting these lives. And, and more than just in a physical way, you know, helping you with your fitness, but I can also be a friend, a mentor, an ear, uh, someone to go to for advice. Um, and I'm an expert. So like I, it's legit. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I'm, ma- I don't feel yeah, like I have Chad. to make anything up. Right. Yeah, for sure. And just to jump in there real quick, you are, you definitely excel at that as far as, you know, camp gladiator and everything, you know, we felt connected to you right away when we started attending more of your camps and we were like, wow, we really like Chad's camps, not only because they're fun, but because of what you just said, you're there and supportive. Uh, as someone we can go to with questions um and just i mean it was obvious that you were a great trainer uh pretty much pretty much all around from our even just our first couple oh, thank you first couple uh, sessions but i just you can go ahead i just wanted to jump in and no, say no, that. that's i appreciate that that's definitely you know what i what i want to have happen that's what i want your experience to be because at the end of the day you've got to go home and say man i really enjoyed that i want to come back you know, and that's where I'm kind of going full circle with this whole thing is, is that my hurdle that I had to overcome and, and find what I loved in myself <clears throat> kind of propelled me to then be an influencer on other people's lives. And it's kind of like a calling now where with Camp Gladiator, it just opened the door even more for me. So now I get to touch it, reach as many lives as, as possible. Right. So that's kind of like our and that's that's our motto with the companies to impact as many lives as possible. So with having large camps or, or me getting to meet people on a, on a daily basis and, and me asking you like, Hey, invite your friends out. It's not because I want their money. I mean, that's nice. It helps me pay my bills. Yeah. But <laughs> That's part of, it. <laughs> part of it. But for me, the bigger uh, payout, let's just say is uh, that I get to impact, improve somebody's life. That, that 60 minutes that you guys are with me, it's just as much fun for me as I hope it is for you. Although sometimes it's grueling, but when you leave that, when you yes. leave that day, <laughs> most times, yeah, right? <laughs> but when you leave, you feel accomplished. You feel like, gosh, I didn't think I was going to get through that, but I did, and it was amazing. Gosh, I'm so proud of myself. Like that, that is what's about. And man, these other people around me were so awesome and encouraging. Like this is the greatest thing. Like that, 
that is what it's about. And sometimes when you're going through stuff and you have a hurdle to overcome, you can't see what's on the other side. It's just a giant hill. You're like, gosh, is that, am I ever going to get to the top so I can see what's on the other side? You know, it's, a, it's, it's just that climb, but you got to stay consistent. You got to have a drive. You got to ha- have something in you that is like, I'm not done. I got to keep taking one step at a time. I got to keep moving. And, and eventually, you know, that door will open. And then when it does, you've got to take this step through the door because for me, me taking a step to the door brought me to you two, brought me to, to all the campers, brought me to North Carolina, brought me to my wife, brought me to my, you know, ended up having my kids. Uh, I mean, I, I, I truly can say that I'm, I'm, I'm blessed beyond all measure. Uh, and I can't ask for anything more. So uh, that was my biggest hurdle. And it ended up being, the story of my life like now it's like beginning to be what my legacy hopefully will be is that uh i will be known as someone who gave everything so that everyone could feel like they were given everything if that makes sense oh total sense and chad thank you for sharing that i know it's always you know it's even after years it's never easy to uh, be vulnerable and share that stuff but we we definitely appreciate that I think there's there's just so much value in talking about that stuff, you know, at, at whatever stage. And that's for our listeners out there. If you ever, if you're go, if you're going through something like that, if you're facing a hurdle, reach out and and, and talk to people. Uh, it can make a huge difference as far Definitely. as getting through that. I think, and you know, <clears throat> even if you can't talk about it right away, just you know, just know that even if you're in that in the midst of that hurdle, uh, if you're really going through something, um, it it will get better. It will get better. Um, you know, it'll look brighter. It will. Maybe not right away, but there is a brighter future ahead for you. So, but anyway, thank you for sharing yeah, that, definitely. Chad. That was really cool. I loved, I loved hearing that story. Um, we can switch here a little bit if you just want to talk about maybe some of your goals for the future. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're going to be with Camp Gladiator, you know, for a while, so we can keep going to your camps. But <laughs> I don't know if you had any other like definitely. You know, if you were already thinking about child number three i know you just had number two but actually um, you know what i'm shutting it down two is good okay (laughs) two is good me and the wife have decided that two is is enough and how many more creative names can you come up with after that so uh, that's true you kind of you kind of you killed it with those two so that's that's the real reason you have to stop you can't think of any other good names i also took blue ivy so i can't i can't take that one (laughs) um yeah no uh no, we're done with two. I think we're good. <laughs> we got my boy and my girl. So um, we're solid on that. As far as uh, future goals, though, uh, I'm actually, I am staying with Camp Gladiator. I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm actually moving into. Good to hear. I was I asked because I was scared. No, I was... <laughs> Don't be scared. I'm here. Uh, the... You can't, you can't leave until we get our six packs. That's the, yeah. the rule. <laughs> All right. Well, then he's never leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to follow you around and see what you're eating on a daily basis. Uh, don't do you that. don't want to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so no, I'm, I'm moving into leadership with Camp Gladiator. Um, uh, so that means hopefully in the next year or two, and once I get a hundred campers, that's why I need all of your help to, to keep coming out to camp and bringing people out so that they join you in this amazing journey. But, uh, I need that. We try, Chad. We try to get our friends uh, to I come. We'll, we'll try a little harder. Sometimes you. it just, it just, just takes them a the little cold. longer to, to figure it out. You know, it's okay. Yep. Um, they'll mm-hmm. just wish they would have jumped in when they, they should have originally. Cause they're like, oh, why sure. haven't I done this since the beginning? That's what they'll say. Um, yep. But outside of that, yeah, so leadership with that, that's some goals for me there. And that's just so that I can make a bigger impact with other trainers too. I love I love training other trainers. I love like sharing my knowledge, whatever knowledge I have. And um, and then, yeah, I'll still be training. Um, definitely, I may be cutting out a few of my camps eventually, but, but they'll have trainers there to take them over. It's not like you'll be missing anything. Um, but... Um, Outside of that, I think in the future, me and my wife, we really want to tackle an idea that we had a long time ago that had a lot to do with a, a ministry that we had placed on our hearts, and that is called All the Little Heroes, in which, just in case you didn't know this about me, I, I draw a little bit. I'm a little bit of an artist. And so um, we, do these, awesome. we do these characters where we take heroes, like modern-day heroes or you know comic book heroes, whatever, and we make them into babies right so it's kind of funny um 
but acutely for nurseries and whatnot. But the idea behind it is that um, we make them into prints. And then uh, for when, when people purchase them from us, part of the proceeds then go to a charity that we pick uh, for a month. And we try, we'll, we'll try and highlight them on our website and get people to their site so they can donate to them and find out what they're, they're about. Uh, but, but those charities have to be child started and child ran from like ages, you know, six all the way up to, I, I think our cutoff is, is 18. Um, but, but yeah, so, so we want to do that because we want them to be heroes in their communities. So we would just really want to highlight those kids that are trying to make a difference in the world and, it, and stop all the hate and all the, you know, just, it, there's a lot of selfishness in the world. And so it's good to see kids that are trying to bring the communities together and build people up instead of tearing them down. And so that's kind of what all the little heroes will encompass and kind of what our focus is on that. Um, so that's something in the, in the future that we definitely want to tackle. Um, outside of that, you know, hopefully just things go well. I can move closer to the lake and that way I'm closer to the water. Um, but uh, that's, that's really it as far as my goals. I'm not, I don't plan on, on doing too much, maybe some traveling at some point when I get to retire whatever that is <laughs> might be a little might while. Be a while so well I love that um that you're building up the kids at such a young age too I think that's so important because you're you know that's engaging the children and making them you know the next generation's leaders I think that's so cool that you know I didn't know that you did that and I think that's yeah, awesome definitely I think it's you know and, and it probably started with when I was training the, the youth athletes and stuff but just seeing what they're what they're capable of in the possibilities like they they're in their minds there's nothing that's not achievable when we grow up and get you know we get scared and there's things like oh, i don't know i don't think i can do that it's too hard or you know there's there's uh there's things that are going to come against me and it, and it may put a bad you know uh, spotlight on me or, or whatever you know whatever the whatever the fear is that stops people from doing things these kids they don't have that all they see is that they want to help somebody. Now let's figure out how to do it. You know, like there's no backlash. It's a kid. So, um, so yes, feeding into that, I think is super important because like as cliche as it sounds like these kids are our future, right? <clears throat> so build them up now, give them, empower them, make them realize that if they work at something and, and they strive to really make a difference and a change that it is achievable and people will rally behind them. Um, I think that that's, that's good too, is that knowing that people have their back. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that, I'm glad that you dig it. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, so Chad, we talked about this a little bit, but if you just want to talk about a little bit more about how your faith helped you through your life, I know you, like I said, you kind of mentioned it, but, um, you know, it's, it was really cool hearing about your journey with that kind of how Nikki brought you back to God. And I think those things are always cool to kind of, it, it I think it often starts with that, um, you know, pulling away from the pride issues and just realizing those things. But if you want to talk a little bit more about that, what a journey that was. So I grew up Lutheran and I don't really have a close tie to, to, or memories to it. I just remember not liking going to church. (laughs) Um, and at some point we just stopped going, um, so I, I always believed in God. I knew that there was a higher power, um, I didn't have a close relationship with him. I knew that I could pray to him, but at, at, most of the time I felt like I, I was praying to then not be sent to hell. I thought I had to earn my way to heaven. And, gotcha. um, and the, the bad things I did, I was always like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please just give me another chance. You know, like always like fearing the worst. Uh, but then after a while, like it just wasn't a concern. I knew, I knew that there were, you know, God was present, but, it wasn't a, a relationship, let's just say. But when I got into high school, I had a friend of mine who, you know, got me back to church. Uh, you know, he prayed with me and, and I became a born again Christian. Uh, but again, like there was like a short stint and then we went crazy. We went to college, did some things not I'm not proud of as far as partying and doing some things like that. I kind of lost myself because I think there's everyone goes through their stuff. My stuff was always self-confidence and, and again, not, not loving myself, right? So it's kind of hard to accept anything else. So yeah. especially when things aren't going your way, and you're, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of excuses. But um, anyway, so then went to the prison system. That all happened. 
you know, I had one guy there. So God was always kind of there. It's really funny how he keeps tapping on your shoulder and doesn't let you forget about him. But uh, I was there, you know, things are bad. Uh, I had a guy who's a really good Christian dude, hand me this little mini Bible and knew I was going through some stuff because of the way I was acting. He goes, you don't seem like this kind of a guy, but you know, if you, if you sound like you're dealing with some things. Here, read this. So, you know, is in Ephesians and uh, is is putting on the armor of God, right? He goes, I want you to read this and just put this on every day. Like if you're feeling the, like anxiety and, and, and whatever fear, you know, go back here and read this. And so I literally did that for every day that I remained in that prison until I had an anxiety attack and, and whatnot, right? So <laughs> still to this day, mm-hmm. um, that's like my favorite verse because it, it did actually bring me some sort of comfort. And now, uh, then meeting Nikki again, she just solidified God in my life. Like she, we just, she just kept pounding and and it was really important to her that she be with a strong Christian man. And since I felt as though I was just a baby Christian trying to come back into that realm, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, yeah, I started going to church and it just, cause like when you think of God, sometimes it's, it's such a. He, he's so big he's everywhere right so it's, it's almost overwhelming yeah. to think gosh how can i how can i have a relationship with god it's, he's just he's so big and and i'm just this little human like oh and everything i do like i, I just have to be so perfect but it's not like that like i i found out through this journey with it it's just like he's your best friend so i talk to him like i'm i'm he's my best friend the way i'll talk to one of my friends like i'm like yo yo god listen <laughs> Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> here, I like here's that. the deal, bro. <laughs> like, because you know, when when you go and you, you think about it, like God, God is in you, right? But you are also in God, so you are one. And it just says that in the Bible, and it, you know, it, and I listen to a lot of worship music. You're like, it's always just solidifying the fact that that you are His child. You know, boy, girl, of any nationality, whatever it is, like you are of Him, and He is of you. So that now brought me a new perspective i guess so when i talk to him it's just like yeah man you know you have literally always been there when i needed you no matter how dark it seemed you were always my light like you were the light in the darkness and where god is there can be no darkness right because he is just light he is light so that's the way i think of it and like some people will come back and say well yeah but you know if there's light then it just means that they're just going to cast a bigger shadow i'm like Okay, but while you're in that light, aren't you covered in light? So, so right? So yeah. there, there can be darkness all around you. It doesn't matter. But while you're in it and you're in, in the presence of the Lord, which is daily, um, you know, unless you accept the darkness in, like, it, it doesn't exist. And so, like, that took a long time for me to process and to, and to accept. Yeah, for but, sure. like, when I have situations like the one I went through, when I'm talking to somebody and they're really going through something, in my mind, I'm thinking of those things. And I'm just like, gosh, I just want to pour into you so bad. Like, although the situations are bad, like, God is constantly with you. He's, he's right there. He's, he's not going to let you fall. He will always be there to pick you up. You just have to lean into him. So, um yeah, that's kind of like the way that I I live my life now. And uh, it's really fun to share that perspective and things with people because I don't think everyone always thinks of it that way. So, yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, that's something I've always thought, like I think I've struggled with in some ways. And, <clears throat> you know, and that's a, we don't have to pray in a, in a more, um, traditional manner we can just be like you know we can tell god how we're feeling because it's not like he doesn't know anyway you know we can be honest with him like we can be like upset when we're praying you know we can we can have those feelings because he understands and i think it's taken me a long time to kind of realize that more too like it doesn't have to just be uh you know a traditional like give and take on a prayer thing it could be i because i think he wants us to be real with him and like talk about our exactly. feelings, you know, what's well, so funny cool. is a lot of people trying to put on that, that front, like, Oh, I'm going to be a really straight, you know, fold my hands and sit up straight and be this awesome Christian while I'm in church. Or if they go to church and then on the outside of that, they're like, it's a completely different person, but they're like, they're still a believer, but they're like, well, I don't have to act that way right now. But, but God's like, you know, he's there. How do I talk to him? It's just this, there's this divide that happens. 
And what's funny is like, I'll pray to God or I'll have a conversation with him while I'm vacuuming my floors or while I'm driving my car to work. It's like on my way to camps, I always pray over our camps every single day that everyone has an amazing experience cool. and that no one gets injured and, and things like that. And, and that maybe through talking to someone at camp that they get to meet him, you know, like, you know, in some fashion, but that they get to yeah. experience that glory. So every day I do that for all of you and myself. And it's like, because I, there should be like the church itself, like the building is a place where we meet. Right. And it's good because there's a lot of power in that. But at the same time, you could be on the outside of that meeting a small group. You could be at a coffee shop and, and isn't prayer and all of that thing just as powerful at a coffee shop as it is in the church. Yeah. Even more powerful. I would right. say sometimes if you're, you know, around non-believers yeah. too, it's definitely you know, more of a and ministry cool that way. Is they get to see that, you know, oh, you're, you're, you're normal. You're in a normal setting. You're not trying to, you know, bash me over the head with the Bible or whatever that, whatever they think is going to happen. And you're like, and they're like, Oh wow, <laughs> this is just normal everyday. They're just kicking back. Like I did, I did beer in, in Bible study one night. And the one guy was like, beer and God, huh? I was like, yeah. And they go, cool. <laughs> I can dig that. I was like, yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> as long as you're not getting wasted, like it's, you know, why not? Um, but yeah, nothing yeah, wrong so, with that. I mean, uh, there's just different ways to reach people. I think that the, the, the view on Christianity and just kind of just religions in, in general is so negative sometimes. And I think it's just that some people, you know, just represent it the wrong way. I don't know. It should, it should be all about in my head, like it should be about love and respect and, and really, you know, you're leading the way, whatever you feel, you know, when you, when you're going out, how would you like to be treated? How would you like to be seen? Would you like to be seen as a jerk or would you like to be seen as someone who just really cares and, and lead your life that way? And then when people look at you and they go, man, what, what do you do? Like who, like, you know, you know, what have you been doing? Like, you, I just see this, you just look so happy and you're, you've got all these friends and, and, or whatever the case is, you're just always so friendly. What is it? And then, then that opens that conversation that opens the door for that. You don't have to like attack people yeah. with, with things. I think that, you know, like you guys, you're very approachable. I, at first you did intimidate me though, because I thought, all oh, these campers are hardcore. I'm not going to impress them. <laughs> uh, how am I going to win them over? All right, Lord, here we go. And then it, it worked itself out. But, but it was because of that approach. I was like, okay, just don't try too hard. Don't try too hard, Chad. Just, 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 yeah. be me. they're going to like you. All right, okay. So luckily for me, that actually panned out. It worked. So uh, anyway, I hope that wasn't too much. I hope I didn't get long-winded on that, but, um, and it got the point across that I was trying to make. No, I think that's perfect. I mean, I think it really just boils down at the end to, you know, we need to be respectful yeah. of people. We need to show them love, um, you know, and that that's really where, that's really where it starts. I think you're right. It, we can get such a bad rap for, I think Christianity in general can have such a, can, can mm -hmm. have a bad a rap to it, unfortunately, because um, there are some people out there that, you know, are trying just to, you know, do whatever they can to convert and pull people in. And while of course, like we want in some, you know, we want that because right. that's what we believe. We also are not going to um, strong arm people because if it, in my perspective, if someone was trying to strong arm me to believe something, I'm not going to believe it almost based almost right. just on principle because it's not for me, it's not right. like my own thinking. Um, if someone's like getting to know me and like talking to me about those things and answering my questions, uh, I'm going to be 10 times more likely to really right. consider what they have well, to say. Like, so I'm glad that I'm definitely glad you, you can that. even it's use really cool. the analogy with this, with Cam Gladiator, right? I mean, if let's wrap it back into fitness, if I came at you on the street and I'm like, just hounding you about Camp Gladiator, like, hey, you need to buy this. So you need to blah 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 blah. Like, and just and, and, yeah, like, you need to like, lose some and circling you and not letting you leave until you got my flyer and you made sure that you put your number in my phone. And then just so you know, I'm going to call you 15 times a day until you sign up. Like, uh, you know, what message is that? And you're uh, like you just said, you're going to like not do it just on principle. Like, this dude pissed me off. Like, what? Even if it is the greatest thing in the world, you just you just turn somebody off completely as opposed to, Hey, you know, 
whatever you're hearing it all like word of mouth like some people try it out and it's like man what's this camp gladiator thing i keep hearing about people having so much fun i see these pictures all over facebook and then like the people that got to experience it are like yeah you should totally just come try it out for free no pressure you know you don't have to commit to anything just come on out you know and see if you like it are you more apt to go try something like that or wait for somebody to come chase you down the street like it's just in my opinion, it kind of works in that same realm, you know, like you lead. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, a great, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, that's a great anal- analogy. It's yeah. a great parallel between how the church should be too. Hey, come and see, you know, no judgments, no like prior commitments, just come and see like right. what we're experiencing, you know, same thing. Yeah, with and all of you walk in it, you know, you walk in this thing and you're so proud. You're wearing your CG shirts, you're doing those things. And just like you're proud of your faith, right? You're walking in that faith. You're leading your life in a way that, that would make the Lord proud. And, and no one's perfect by any means, but you're leading by example. Right. You're drawing people to you because of the way that you choose to live your life. So uh, that's what I think is the difference. But. Yeah. And side note there, the CG shirts, we're always wearing them because they're super comfortable. They are, aren't they? It's that tribe that's like all I ever wear for T-shirts anymore. I'm not going to lie. Then- when I'm at a promo event and I'm at a booth, I'm like, hey, bonus, you get these awesome shirts. Feel it. And I make them touch this. I make them touch <laughs> yes. the fabric. I was like, "This is quality. We don't give you just straight cotton shirts that will shrink, and you'll they'll be a schmedium when you're done. Like it doesn't happen." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about that the other day. It's one of the best benefits to doing CG is we get a free shirt like all the time. All yeah, the time. they give you tons. Yeah, we have twenty shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Closets are just filled with CG. I mean, mine's overflowing. I might start giving stuff away or something. But yeah, uh, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, Chad. We will um, ask the last question here because we're getting close to our time. We'll yeah, wrap yeah. it up. But if you could give, <clears throat> excuse me, if you could give our listeners one piece of advice, uh, what would that be going forward? Honestly. And I'll kind of encompass the few things we didn't hit on, but my one piece of advice is if you have if you have a goal for your life, whether that be health and fitness, whether that be getting a new job, whether that be getting out of a bad situation, um, or or building relationships with people, um, the first step, honestly, is to make a step. You can't do anything by sitting there and wishing it to happen, right? There has to be some sort of action. And I would, I would uh, just say that as scary as it is, surround yourself with like-minded people because if you, have, if you can find a support system to guide you through that, you're, you're more apt to, one, go. <laughs> Two, you're, you're probably going to achieve those goals because um, you can't do it alone, right? Nobody can do anything alone. Um, that is my one piece of advice. I can't do what I do by myself. Um, I need all of you. I need my family to make sure that I get stuff done and to hold me accountable to um, to what I represent. So that's my one piece of advice: is just to set a goal, attack it, and then you know make sure that you're surrounding yourself with like-minded and supportive people to make sure that those things are achieved. I love it, Chad. I think that's that great. that is an awesome piece of advice for our listeners. I love it. Cool. Um, thank you so much for being on our show. We definitely appreciate you spending your time with us. We always love, um, you know, we obviously know you, but getting to know people just learning a, more things, yeah, learning more things, talking about things that we might not generally talk about, uh, and just having it out there for other people to learn from and listen to is super cool. So we just, uh, you know, we really appreciate your time here. Well, definitely. And thank you again so much for having me. Um, this was a great experience. I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem, man. Thank you for listening to that episode with Chad Hitchcock. We appreciate uh, you spending your time with us. Uh, We definitely enjoyed interviewing him. So thanks again, Chad, for coming on our show. Uh, If you enjoy the episode, definitely go to uh, my website where um, where you might be listening to the podcast and leave us a comment on there. It's pretty easy. Just scroll down to the bottom and let us know uh, what you thought of the podcast. We would definitely appreciate that so we'll know you know what we did right what we did wrong possibly uh, that will be helpful uh, also Miranda and I and I have it linked to in this post we have a page 
on Patreon now that you can go. If you're interested, you can go and support this podcast. Um, you just go to www.patreon.com slash freedomcast, uh, and then you can get on there and check out our page. We have a little video kind of explaining what that is and how you can uh, support us in that way. So just, um, you know, ch- if you have a couple minutes, check that out. We definitely appreciate it. But otherwise, have a great rest of your Friday, and stay frosty, friends.